Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, we're going to create this cyclone separator and we're going to set it up parametrically, meaning that we can change the entire design by simply changing some numbers that we define earlier in the tutorial. I've already made it here. So let's start fresh with a new design. First things first, we're going to define our parameters. We're going to go up here to this sigma. If it's not up there, it'll be down here under modify. We need to define some dimensions that our separator is going to have. So, for example, we're going to do the top diameter. Let's set that to 250 millimeters, should be about 10 inches. Likewise, we're going to do the bottom diameter. This will be 150 maybe. We're going to do the height. I'll make this 300 millimeters, about a foot. And then we need to do the wall thickness. Let's have four millimeters to begin with. And then we need the diameter of our hose we're going to use. I know my hose for my shop vac is uh, one and a quarter inches, so I'm going to change the unit type from millimeters to inches. I'm going to put 1.25. Hit OK. When we go to do our sketches, Fusion 360 will automatically calculate and convert it from inches to millimeters. And these five are the basic ones we need for this tutorial. You can add any ones you want later on. Click OK. Now let's actually begin modeling. Oh, I forgot to mention, you can only access the change parameters option if you have your timeline enabled. If you're in direct modeling, you can't use parameters, which I think is kind of silly, but that's just the way they do it. Create new component, cyclone. Start a sketch. Start on the bottom plane. C for circle and create two circles of any size right on the origin point, one within the other. On the inner circle, click it, highlight it, and hit X. This changes it to construction. The difference between construction and normal lines is if I code it and trying to extrude this circle, as you can see, there's like an outside ring and then an inner one. If I go back into the sketch, right click edit sketch, and I make the inside one construction, and then I go and try to extrude it, the extrude tool will ignore any construction line and only focus on the blue normal lines. Uh, and not just the extrude tool, pretty much every tool will ignore construction lines. So we have our two circles, D for dimension, click the inner one, and start typing out the name of your parameter. We're going to use the bottom diameter, B, and you can see it'll kind of come up and give you suggestions based off uh, what letters you enter. Click on bottom diameter, hit enter. D for dimension, now click the inside construction circle and the outside circle, and you can place a dimension for their offset and add wall thickness as a dimension. And that's all we need for that sketch. Click stop sketch. Go up to construction and click offset plane. Just click on your circle here. Drag it up a bit, and uh, for the distance, enter your height parameter. Height. We're going to do another sketch. Let me turn off our first one for now. Create sketch and click the new plane we just made. And we're going to do the exact same thing almost that we did for the previous sketch. Do two circles. Make the inner circle construction. 
and give it the top diameter dimension. And then the distance between the inner and outer circles will be wall thickness. Stop sketch. Turn on the first sketch again. Now we're going to create the base shape of our cyclones. So go to create, loft, and then just click the two profiles and click OK. We have a basic shape of our cyclone. Next we're going to add the, the connection that goes sideways for the actual hose that will pick up debris. So new sketch and make it on the side plane right here. You can make it on this back one too, but I'm going to just do this one. We want the geometry, we want to be able to reference the geometry of our cyclone right now in this sketch, that it will, which will help us achieve, you know, full parametric design, if that makes any sense. Um, it let us reference previously made geometry so that when we want to update our design, we it will know what to update based off of. I have no I have no idea how to word this. P for project. Click the outside face of the cyclone. Okay. You can go into bodies and turn off the cyclone for now. As you can see these top two lines correspond to the sideways silhouette of the top and bottom of the cyclone. L for line make a line connecting these two sides make a construction you can also make these projected lines construction as well and we're going to do two circles again one within the other inner one is construction give it the hose diameter as its diameter distance between these two will be, you guessed it, wall thickness. In the sketch palette box, you'll see all the available sketch constraints. Click tangent, then click the top line and the outer circle. Tangent With the tangent tool still active, click the left line and then the circle again. As you can see, it kind of made this circle stick up here in the corner. Stop the sketch. Turn on the cyclone main body. E for extrude and click the circle we just made. And drag it out. Instead of cut, make sure it's set to join. For distance, I want it to end right here, right at this corner. Uh, to do it parametrically, we can enter top diameter slash 2, so it's divided by 2, plus wall thickness. As you can see, it perfectly terminates right at the edge of the cyclone. It doesn't have to end right there. If you want to drag it out further, that's fine. I just I just like how it looks. Now we're going to make this separator hollow. Go to modify, shell, click the face of the sideways tube and then the face of the bottom. Make sure it's set to inside and where it says inside thickness, enter wall thickness. It's kind of hard to see the inside, so we're going to do a section analysis. Go to inspect, section analysis. Turn on the origin and kind of rotate to the back. And click this back plane from this side. And click OK. Now we have an inside view. We didn't delete anything, we just have an inside view of 
our separator. Here's how here's our wall, this blue cross hatched area that's the walls of our cyclone separator. You can turn off the origin. And if you want to get out of this view, you can just turn off the section view from up here under analysis. Next I'm going to make a tube coming out the top for our vacuum or dust collector. Sketch, click the top of the separator, two circles again, right on the origin point. Inner one is construction, give it the hose diameter dimension, and then a wall thickness between the two. Stop sketch, E for extrude. I want to cut out, use this profile to cut a hole in the top, and I want this hole to end exactly where the top ends, where it goes from the top to empty space. I want it to end about there. To do this, all I have to enter is negative wall thickness. There we go. I'm going to use that same sketch to make the pipe coming out the top. E for extrude, click on the center. I'm going to do symmetric. Make sure it's set to new body. Or you can set it to join, it's your preference. I prefer this part to be a separate body. Let's not use a parameter and let's just instead just pull out 60 millimeters on either side. Okay. Turn off the analysis. I'm going to turn off our main cyclone body. And I'm going to cut make some cutouts in this pipe. To do that, sketch put on this side plane and come up here to our pipe. I'm going to project this geometry like we did with the cyclone body with by pressing P, clicking on the side face, click OK, and now we can just turn it off. I'm going to make a uh, square cutout in the side here. So I'm going to go R for rectangle. Just make a rectangle of arbitrary size. I want it to go exactly halfway through the pipe. So I'm going to go to sketch, point, put a point right in the middle of this line. This triangle symbol means that it's in the mid middle of the line. Put a point there. And I'm going to hold control and select the point and the line and click coincident. So now this line is lined up vertically with the this point which is on the middle of this line. D for dimension, I want this to be wall thickness away from there. And I want this line lined up with this point. So I gave another coincident constraint. Let's just have this be, I don't know, 40 millimeters high. Okay, that's good. Stop sketch, turn back on the pipe, B for extrude, go to pull it out a little bit, one side symmetric. Um, and just pull it out until it's cutting all the way through the pipe and click OK. To give this, to make this actually hollow, go to modify shell like we did earlier. Click this back face, this top face, 
not down here, and then click the very top of the pipe and enter wall thickness for the inside thickness. There we go, now it's hollow and it has this cutout. And turn back on the main cyclone body. Gonna, I'm gonna edit this section analysis so we can see the cutout, there we go. Now our modeling of the cyclone separator is essentially done. Um, now I'm gonna show you why we went to the trouble of defining those parameters and setting up our dimensions that way. You can come up to your parameters, change parameters, and now you can modify them and then the entire design will change based on how you modify these. For example, let's change the wall thickness. Let's say I want it to be thinner. You can change it to two millimeters instead of four. Hit enter. Now it's much thinner. This is also thinner. The center pipe. Let's change that back to four. What if I want to use a bigger hose? I can change it to a two inch hose. Um, the big, the bottom diameter is kind of big, so let's change it to one hundred millimeters. In the top, we change it 300. Could also make it a little shorter. That's no, taller. Act. 250, that's short. And see, you can just kind of play around with the parameters until you get a design you like. Or if you need to make multiple cyclones um, for different shops or just different vacuums, etc., you can just, instead of having to remake an entire new design, you can just modify the parameters and then you have the dimensions etc that you need and then you can export this 3d print it etc yep that's the conclusion of this tutorial from here you could probably if you want to 3d print this you could probably cut it into a few different sections because I don't think um, I don't think most 3d printers could actually fit this on their bed um, you could add flanges for mounting. You probably need to add a flange around here. So you could you could actually mount this pipe securely. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any requests for tutorials, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.